Look, Spade, we're tired. Why don't you tell us what you know so we can go home? You think we want to keep you under these hot lamps all night long until you talk? This ain't so bad, Phil. Got any cocoa butter? Stop being a wise guy or we'll have to use more persuasive methods. Yeah? What are you gonna do, Dundee? Frighten me with your baby pictures? Bring them in. So, you won't talk, eh, Spade? As they say in Brighton Beach, yet. Well, this is one of our model prisoners. Goes by the name of Ditto. Been here 10 years now, doing real well, haven't you, Ditto? Yes, what's up, what's up? You know what, Spade, let me show you how we treat our model prisoners. Wait, wait, I didn't do nothing, I didn't do nothing! Will you nothing. talk now, Spade? Sure, how about this? I think that I will never see a poem as lovely as a tree. Oh. Quit whining, Ditto. You can take it. Better start talking, Spader. Lieutenant Knuckles is gonna shift it into third gear. Mm. Oh, I'm shaking like a leaf. I'm not as young as you used to be. Thank you. <clears throat> Is that the best you can do? Well, Spade? All right, all right, I'll talk, right, I'll talk, I'll talk. All right, Ditto, you can go. Come on. Hey, by the way, I ordered that new bestseller, that book, Tomorrow Gets Better. Let me know when it hits the shelves, all right? Sure, sure thing, Lieutenant. All right, Spade, start spilling the beans. It was dark in my office. Very dark. Not that dark. That's better. Jake Spade, private eye, was pondering his next move. He was looking for a hopeful sign. He needed a new case, and right away. Having solved the mystery of the dragon's eye, Spade's desk was clear. Jake Spade, your dime buys my time. Hello, Jake. This is Margot Canister. Remember me? Let me see. Sultry, brunette, wealthy, legs like a queen at credenza. That's right. Nope, can't seem to place you. Jake, you're so amusing. I called not only because I miss your witty banter and your charming bon mots, but because I desperately need your help. And I thought you were only calling to listen to my witty bonbons. What is it this time? Did someone walk off with your caboose again? No, it's not as bad as all that. But let me guess, you got it bad, and that ain't good. All right, beautiful, lay it out for me. I do like how you get right to the point, Jake. It's my only weakness. I owe a bit of money to Troy Brokenridge, the notorious playboy gambler, and the idle son of the idle rich. We used to go together, but he was more interested in poker chips than puckered lips. Troy could really never love anyone but himself. When are you going to wise up and marry a nice doctor? Or an organ grinder? Mm, you know me, Jake. Unlucky at love. And unlucky at cards. Unlike Troy, whose luck seems to never run out. It's like I'm talking to a mirror. All right, tell me the rest of it. Troy threatened to go to my mother-in-law, Matilda Phipps Mortimer Canister, to extort what I owe from her. I'm in a quandary. Can you help me, Jake? I see your quandary and raise you a conundrum. Can't this wait? I have a million things to do. Please, Jake, I implore you. Oh, all right, as long as you implore me. Besides, spending time with you is like an all-expense-paid vacation for two days, three nights, plus accommodations. Where are you, at Canderley? Yes, but do try to be quiet when you get here. I don't want Mother Superior to catch wind of it. Can't just wait until morning. I suppose, if it must. I do hope I can get a good night's sleep. <laughs> try counting cards. See you around 10 in the a.m. 
This is going to be a tough one. It took Spade 26 and a half minutes, give or take, to reach Candy Lake. It was an imposing affair. I mean, big. The kind of place where they ate mink for breakfast and hunted quail in the hallway. Jake had been here before when he recovered the priceless stolen model train, the Dragon's Eye, and solved the murder of its owner, Arthur Canister. So it was just like coming home for him, the old actor's home. Thank you for calling. If you are a Jehovah's Witness, we have all the old time religion we require. I'll soon we forget, Methuselah. Hmm? Hmm. I confess. You do look vaguely familiar. Oh, yes. You're the plumber. Good of you to come. Madam's bidet has a mind of its own. Churchill, it's Jake Spade, the private eye that found the stolen Dragon's Eye train and apprehended Sam Canister, who murdered his brother Arthur, while disguised as their mother Matilda? Describing your work history is not necessary, sir. Please come in. May I take your coat, sir, and hat? Thank you, Churchill. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> uh, please sit down, Mr. Plummer. Perhaps I could uh, polish your plunger while you wait. Churchill, it's me, Jake Spade, Private Eye. Mm. Take a good look. Mm. Slick down here, piercing stare, yoo-hoo pallor. Oh, welcome back, Mr. Uh, Spade. Yeah. It's good to see you. Yeah. With whom did you wish to speak? Margo, but don't broadcast it. She wants me to let sleeping dogs lie. Of course, sir. Very good, sir. May I bring you something cool while you wait? No, I have to get home in time for a Passover. We're expecting a life. Oh, very good, sir. Well, let's not keep your dinner guests waiting. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Mm. Care for the chinchilla. Mr. Justin Cromwell brought me over on a flat surface. So it's ready to attack. Hmm. Who knew? Miss Margot Canister. Thanks, Churchill. Ex ne on the Uddle say. If you be so kind, go upstairs and wax the blues. You thrill me to no end, madam. Margot Canister. She was easy on the eyes. In fact, she was the reason men had eyes in the first place. Speaking of eyes, her eyes were like two limpid pools without a lifeguard. She had lips that worked overtime at time and a half, and her chassis was streamlined, just like the 1951 Buick 300. And what lovely upholstery, too. But Margot hasn't been quite the same since her train-loving husband Arthur was killed but she was able to lay her hands on the occasional creature comfort. Jake, darling. Margo, you're frisky today. You're probably eating too many oats. Thank God you're here, Jake. Can I offer you something? Skip it. I ate last week. 
Can you help me with my problem? Can I? Is the book Jewish? Uh, I don't think so. Of course not. Since Broken Ridge is a regular at Valentino's, let's start with the owner, Eddie Harwood. The two are pretty close. Perhaps I can prevail upon Harwood to do me a favor and get Narcissus to lay off you. If that doesn't work, I have more persuasive methods at my disposal. You won't do anything too drastic, will you, Jake? Let's just say Broken Ridge has a ticklish side. You figure it out. Oh, Jake. <laughs> you really are a wonder. Yeah, a wonder. I wonder how you're going to pay me after I solve your little problem. Jake, there's much more to life than just money. Margo, this is very cozy, but I can't help if I can't breathe. Oh, I'm sorry, Jake. You know what being near you does to me. Well, try to control yourself. I'm embarrassed for you. Margo, I see you have a visitor. Enter Matilda Phipps Mortimer Canister, wealthy matriarch of the Canister clan. It is rumored that she was a great beauty when she was young, but no one is alive any longer to prove it. You remember Mr. Spade? Of course I remember Mr. Spade. Mr. Spade recovered the stolen dragon's eye train that you thought you could hide in a carton of eggs. Then he apprehended my son Sam, who was murdered by my poor train-loving son Arthur, and tried to escape with the train as well. You're looking great, Mrs. Canister. Young man, I haven't looked well since Teddy Roosevelt charged up San Juan Hill. To what do we owe this visit? Margo needs some advice about a parking ticket. I told her to pay the two dollars and be done with it. The only problem being, where is she going to get the two dollars? Hardy, har, har. Well, you two will want to discuss your financial matters in private. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Just a moment, Mr. Spade. As you know, I wasn't born yesterday. She used to drink with General Grant outside Vicksburg. Uh, Mr. Spade, I am aware that my daughter-in-law, Margot, has gambling debts. I know that Mr. Brokenridge holds the markers. Uh, kindly tell Mr. Brokenridge that we will accept no blackmail. We will pay when we can. I still have a few teeth in my head and a few friends in town. I'll pass the message on, ma'am. Good. Benissima. Churchill, kindly show Mr. Spade the door. Very good, madam. As you can see, Mr. Spade, this door is made of chestnut and has been lovingly stained to a golden brown. I wax it daily. It is probably my favorite door in the house. Not that door, Magellan. The outside door. Thank you, madam. Your magnanimity is stupefying. Thanks, Churchill. I like all your doors. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Ruta Ruta. Yeah. yeah, good day to you. Hi, beautiful. You know where I can find Eddie Harwood? Same place you can always find him. Thanks, Carl. Eddie Harwood, tough, shrewd, knows how to serve a right cross and a perfect Manhattan. Doesn't stick his neck out for anyone, except once in a while. Jake Spade, as I live and breathe. Rummage through any good sock drawers lately? I'd pick my poison, but I'm afraid that's just what I get. Not you, Jake. What brings you around? Margo Canister called me, told me Troy Brokenridge is putting a muscle on her because she owes him some scratch. I was hoping she might be able to pay him back on layaway. Anything you can do? Look, Jake, Margo is one of my best customers. She gives the place class. But Brokenridge is a person not to be messed with. You wouldn't know it by looking at him, but he is one tough hombre. So am I, Eddie. Where's Broken Ridge now? You drew pocket aces. He's in the back room playing cards. But there's no rush. He ain't going nowhere. In the meantime, take a gander at the songbird that I imported from Paris, Texas. You won't admit you love me. 
and so how am I ever to know you always tell me perhaps 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 a million times I've asked you and then I've asked you over again you only answer perhaps 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 if you can make your mind know we'll never get started and I don't want to wind up feeling parted broken hearted so if you really love me say yes but if you don't dear confess and please don't tell me perhaps 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 if you can make your mind off we'll never get started and i don't want to wind up feeling parted broken hearted you ask me if i love you well guess I simply cannot express what can I say but perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Miss Peaches, Miss Peaches, I just want to say one thing. I think you're gorgeous, just gorgeous. Run away with me before the last set and I'll drink domestic champagne from your slippers. Hey, where you taking me? To, to bed. bed. All right, but I'd much rather go with Peaches. Peaches Latour, the sultriest, sexiest songbird on the scene, had a figure like Venus de Milo with arms, like a bonfire with no campfire girls around. You get the picture. Don't make me draw it for you. Hiya, Eddie. Who's this great big hunk of manhood? Peaches Latour meet Jake Spade, private eye. It's a pleasure to watch you work, Miss Latour. Well, you'll have to allow me a private performance real soon. One just for you and Mr. Spade. Please, call me Peaches. How can I avoid it? I'll be seeing you. May we? In all the old familiar places. Well, that was exhausting. Now on to Broken Ridge. This way, I'll make the introductions, but don't expect too much, Jake, and be careful. Hey, Eddie, who's the squirt? Mind your manners, Paulie. This is my friend, Jake Spade. No dealing off the bottom of the deck tonight. Jake, let me introduce you to the boys. This is Bug Eye. Bug Eye, note the thick glasses. Won them in a pinochle game in Perth Amboy. The beret comes with an interesting story. There's no time to tell it, but it involves a truckload of black market escargot and a big German guy named Frenchie. This smoothie is Tony Bang Bang. Tony Bang Bang used to be part of the Manjo Katza mob, but he was traded to the Quante Bruta boys. The mob got Louis the Lug and Tony Abitz in return. Bang Bang has the cleanest gun in town. Once he blinded a guy while loading it. It's not fully loaded. This is Ossified O'Brien. Ossified O'Brien, a real degenerate gambler and hard drinker, once lost 50 grand in a two-day game because he thought he was playing canasta, guzzled a pint of Old Spice once in desperation. Sailors followed him around for three weeks. If you're wondering how Ossified got back into Valentino so quickly after being carried out minutes ago, he fell into the kitchen from the alley, staggered through the door to the back room, did a somersault in front of the poker table and fell into the chair. Meet Pauly Bag of Peeps. Pauly Bag of Peeps. Toughest hombre in the bunch. Pauly once bludgeoned a man to death with two nose hairs braided together. Pauly's so tough he once broke into San Quentin just to hide a caribou in the warden's office. The warden placed himself in solitary confinement until the animal could be released into the wild. For the distribution of cards, we have the great Butterfingers from Cincinnati. Butterfingers Blondell, 
This broad was once the fastest dealer in the East. Her deal was so speedy that the players never even saw the cards. She would have to tell them who won the hand. Of course, that was a number of years ago, and she's not quite as nimble as she used to be. I'm just getting warmed up, fellas. Yeah, uh, warm. And this is Troy Brokenridge. Troy Brokenridge, spoiled son of the rich, loans money at high interest, very fond of himself. Kind of an upper-class narcissus with a manicure. Sometimes Brokenridge sends himself flowers with a nice card attached. No nickname for you, Troy? My friends call me TB. Yeah, at least they don't call you smallpox. You're the one I'm here to see. Always happy to talk to a friend of Eddie's. Look, can we listen private? I'm on a hot streak. Can it wait till later? It won't take long. Then I'll be out of your hair. Oh, sorry. You heard the man. He's busy. Besides, they got a great hand, so beat it, small fry. Yeah. When do your teeth make parole? <laughs> <laughs> I got a great hand. <laughs> You mean you had a great hand? No. Ah! Oh! Hey! Anybody moves and he gets three smacks of a kind. And I don't want to give Eddie more heartburn than he deserves, so I'll stop by Broken Ridge around two. Don't bother getting up, gentlemen. You might sprain something. And your peeps are stale. <laughs> But Spade, what does this do re me have to do with fa sol la? I'm glad you asked. That's when you called. I remember it was early the next morning. Hilde Johnson, Spade's girl, Friday. She's tough. She's sympathetic. She bakes. He should appreciate her more. She's working on it. Jake Spade, detective agency. Your dime buys our time. He's, uh, filing some fingernails. Call back in five. Look out, Hildy. Got to get us on the radio. Very important. Oh, good morning. How are you today, Hildy? Not bad, Hildy. Oh, you look swell today, Hildy. Oh, thank you, Hildy. Quiet, listen. I got ten dollars on no away from Not again, Jake. What about my back pay and the rent and my back pay? This is a sure thing. I got it straight from my contact at Nabisco. I don't know. It's Oreo out front early on, Unita Biscuit second, Noah Wafer third, followed by Animal Crackers, Laura Dune, Fig Newton, and Swally Back. Around the first turn, Oreo seems to be dunking a bit, Animal Crackers in the soup, Unita Biscuit running like a little kid in short pants, Laura Dune looks dainty, Swally Back, and Fig Newton. Approaching the half mile mark, it's Noah Wafer coming up on the outside, Fig Newton's a little soft, Oreo creamy in the middle, Animal Crackers looks crunchy, Unita Biscuit is crumbling, and Zwieback melting into last place. Around the last turn and into the stretch, it's Noah Wafer out front, Oreo second, Unita Biscuit third, followed by Lorna Dune, Fig Newton, Animal Crackers, and Zwieback. And now they're approaching the finish line, and it's Oreo and Nilla Wafer running neck and neck. Nilla Wafer and Oreo. Oreo and Nilla Wafer. Nilla Wafer. Oreo. And at the finish line, Animal Crackers by a tail? <laughs> Nice work, Lucky Lindy. Now what are we gonna do? Don't cry, Hildy. I have a new case for Margot Canister. It'll pay off. The canisters? Oh. You'd have better luck betting on a trifecta. Now I'll have to go back to the Woolworths lunch counter in Peoria. I'm sorry I ever came here. Why did you come to the big city anyway? I was hoping to become a sensation on the glockenspiel. That reminds me, I saw my saxophone. I'm the hockey. But Jake, you don't play the saxophone. I know. I have it for hawking. Jake Spade, private eye. Right now we're clueless. Give me that phone. Spade talking. Jake. Phil Dundee from Homicide. What's on your mind, Copper? We got a line on this guy, Broken Ridge. You know him? Yeah, I just met him last night at Valentino's. The guy Shylock's money all over town. Likes to unleash his goons on the birds who don't pay on time. We think he's connected to a missing persons case. We're investigating. Who didn't show up for breakfast? Band leader Artie Fasola didn't show up for the second set last night. Fasola and Broken Ridge have been jostling over this bird called Margot Canister. We feel maybe 
Broken Ridge bought Vasala a one-way ticket out of town on the Pincushion Express. So what do you want from me? See if you can get a sense of what Broken Ridge has been up to lately. Pump him for information. You know, charm him, Jake. You're good at that. As a personal favor to me. Your timing's good. I'm already scheduled to see Broken Ridge later on. I'll get back to you. Thanks, Jake. What's the sitch, Jake? Fasola's missing, and Dundee doesn't think it's about do re me. But why are we shilling for Dundee? And what's wrong with his knee breakers? I'm the core of the apple, Hildy. Dundee may be a cop, but he knows quality when he sees it. Mm, maybe he knows bait when he sees it. He also knows that I know, that he knows that I know, that helping him will also look good for me, too. What are you going to do, Jake? First thing I'm going to do is have a quick snort. All right, where is it, Hildy? If you're referring to the demon Yoo-Hoo, I have removed it. You are on a case, and there'll be no blowing of one's top. It's Ovaltine for you, Buster. At times like this, I really wish you'd become a glockenspieler. Glockenspielist? Glockenspielmer? And if I may add an addendum, may I remind you that somebody's birthday is coming up, and I may not have the inclination to bake a pineapple upside down cake this year. Pineapple upside down. Pineapple upside down. Oh, Jake, please get a hold of yourself. Pineapple upside down. Pineapple oh, upside the down. World. Pineapple upside down. Just get out of here and bring me some money, too. Make a nice lyric. All right, I'll call you. And I think it's Glockenspielologist. Churchill, it's deja vu all over again. What are you doing here? Well, Mr. Brokenridge's butler ran off with his scullery maid, so I offered to assist. Actually, I need the supplementary income as I'm working my way through college. Wow, really, Churchill? What are you studying? Medieval history. Or as you call it, current events. You never fail to fail to amuse me, sir. Now, oh, tell Mr. Brokenridge you're here. Thanks, old sock. Hello, Spade. Broken up any good card games lately? Sorry about that VD, uh, TP, uh, Broken Ridge. Don't lose any winks. There's always more where that came from. What's on your mind? Aren't you going to offer me something? I'm sorry, Spade. Please, forgive me. Would you like something? No, I don't care for anything. I heard you were witty, but I wasn't expecting anything as undernourished as this. Please, sit down. Now, what can I do for you? Well, it's like this. Margot Canister owes you so money, and she can't pay it all at once. She wanted me to ask you if she can stretch it out over three or four payments. Also, Artie Fasol has gone missing. Nobody's seen him since last evening, and people are getting moderately concerned. Several citizens asked me to ask you if you had possibly seen him. Is that it? I think so. Which one should I answer first? Which one matters more to you? They're both important. First of all, Margot didn't borrow money from me in installments, you know. It's not like she's buying a washing machine at Macy's. Come on, Broken Ridge. Give a lady a break. And as for Fasola, I haven't heard anything about it. But I'm not all broken up about him being scarce. If I see him sticking to the bottom of my shoe, I'll let you know. Wow. Love is a vicious handmaiden. My dislike for him isn't just about Margot. That moron... Couldn't play an elated note if his life depended on it. Dreadful. Simply dreadful. Like someone sawing an accordion in half. Tell us how you really feel, Tuscanini. Anyway, we can't kill all the bad musicians. Who's gonna play the national anthem? 
and good or bad, I'm looking for him. That'll behoove you to cooperate. Always happy to behoove. I'll tell the jokes, Broken Ridge, and I'll also let myself out. I know Churchill has a big test on Vlad the Impaler tomorrow. Oh, and by the way... Yes, Spade? You look fabulous. Dundee? Who's your friend? Phil Dundee, chief of detectives. Been around, seen everything. Solves a murder now and again. Dreams of retiring and becoming the manager of a Broadway theater. I was gonna ask you the same thing, Spade. A solo. Looks like he's played his last Roomba. What do you know about it? Nothing. I was shooting the breeze with Troy Brokenridge all day. He has plenty of breeze. Well, we'll have to check that out. Carnos do by any minute. We have to go down to the station house and talk about it. Wait a minute. What are you doing? He never could keep time. Just making sure. And that's how we got here. We checked your story with Broken Ridge. He says you weren't with him that afternoon. He's lying. Anyway. Why would I kill Fasola? I'm tone deaf. Lieutenant Julian Orbach, always prepared. When he goes to a police grilling, he brings his own spatula. Orbach comes from a long line of law enforcement officers. During construction on the Appian Way, Sergeant Job Orbach patiently issued a ticket to Spartacus for being crucified on the wrong side of the road. Folks, Spade, you're in a tough spot. The body was found in your office with blood all over it, no evidence of it being planted there. We know Fossil and Brokenridge were vying for the affections of Margot Canister. Perhaps she had you eliminate the competition. You guys must have been out sick the day they taught us about women. That may be the dimmest idea anyone's ever come up with since Thomas Edison invented the nightlight. You're not so funny, Spade. But without a weapon or a clear motor, we can't hold you. Too bad. I'm in desperate need of holding. Let me ask you a question, Dundee. You just did. Let me ask you another. You just did. I'll let you have one more. How did Fasola buy it? We've got an idea. We'll know more after the autopsy. So you can go, Spade. But if someone's trying to frame you, I get busy right away. Thanks for the advice, Phil. No hard feelings. I know you need me on the outside to solve the case. Oh. Can I have my dingus back? What is it? It's the stuff that dreams are made of. Hey, Dundee. Come on, order some lunch. You want some bacon with that egg on your face? Remember, Private Eyes, when occasional irregularity strikes, don't be a shameless. All gumshoes become a little too hard-boiled now and again. Try Who Done It, the gentle laxative that leaves everyone guessing. Nice of you to show up, Sherlock. Let me just wipe up the last of the blood and we can order lunch. Well, who asked you to do it anyway? I would have waited for the cleaning lady, but she doesn't come in till next, uh, never. Who needs her? You're doing a great job. Yeah, watch it, Jake. I still control the yoo supply around here. So you're ready to wrap this one up, Seamus. This story's getting kind of thin. Yeah, just let me talk to Margot. Oh, she's got some information you need? No, I just like talking to her. She makes me nervous. Well, let me know when you round up the usual suspects. I'd like to be there when you announce the killer. I'm not really interested in who did it. It's just that I am losing my mind around here. Things getting pretty dull without me around, eh, Angel? 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say something? Listen, Angel, I want you to call Eddie Harwood and tell him I'm bringing everyone to Valentino's after I talk to Margot. Ask him if eight is all right. Spade. The plot thickens. They frowned Broken Ridge about a half hour ago in a state of being very dead. It's not pretty. Looks like he choked on a full-length mirror. 
We know you couldn't have done it. You were with us till three o'clock. Thanks, Phil. I can only tolerate being suspected for one killing a week thanks to my hectic schedule. Anyway, I'm rounding up the usual suspects at Valentino's at eight. I have a pretty good idea how this is gonna wind out. You're still a prime suspect. Thanks, Phil. I'll try not to let that bother me. See you later. And I'll see you at Valentino's. Fine, I'll meet you there. You're an angel, Angel. Oh, we've been expecting you. It's the chinchilla. It won't attack on command. Madam is very worried. Churchill, I don't have time to play right now. I have to talk to Margot. It's very important. Jake, what is it? Sorry, Gretchen. I stole those mangoes last two. Oh, Jake. He was the only man I loved. This week. Well, you'll get over it in half an hour. Like Chinese food. But there's more. Your ex-boyfriend isn't breathing either. Troy? Oh, this is a shock, Jake. Who do you think is responsible? Well, you're made to order for Broken Ridge because you owed him all that due. Broken Ridge could have killed your boyfriend for so long. Then he could have killed Troy for revenge, Angel. Oh, Jake, how could you? I get around, but not that fast. Listen, Glamour Puss, I suspect everyone. The police even seem to think I might have put Fasola on ice. I wonder if I did. Anyhow, we're all going down to Valentino's where I will announce the killer. Where's Uncle Milty? If you are referring to me, little Ricky, here I am. Well, you're coming too. You might have done it to get Margo off the hook as well. But I have an airtight alibi. Of course, if I had given my alibi some air, he wouldn't be dead. But I will come along anyway. Perhaps I can meet a young man with cash who can dance the samba. Okay, I'll get Hildy and meet you guys there. I'll wrap this up in a hurry. I don't want to miss the all-you-can-eat chicken at Polet d'Or. To begin with, anyone with ears had the motive for killing Fasola, as he butchered one Gershwin tune after another. You got that right. He made my mustache curl. Secondly, you all owe Broken Ridge money, so any of you could have iced him. He would never have seen it coming if someone approached him from the front, as he rarely looks up from his mirror. Tell me about it. Even I couldn't vamp him. That's enough, doll. You can calibrate your pistons later. But your dance is thematically valuable, as Broken Ridge was popular with at least two ladies. Three. Last year, I had a May-September romance in August. But here's the final piece of the puzzle. Both men were killed in the same way, almost undetectable. But I detected it. Al Spade, we examined both bodies and didn't come up with anything. And we looked, too. Anybody ever heard of Gobeline? Ain't that some sort of French stew they make in a crock pot and season with tarragon? Quiet, Tony. Where's your silencer? I left it home in my crock pot. Gobeline is a lipstick developed by the Nazis during World War II by the notorious makeup artist to the Fuhrer, Max Fascist. They called it the cousin of death. Guaranteed not to smudge, smear, or leave you alive. It's also a time-release formula, so the poor sap didn't die until later on. Brilliant. Please, Phil, don't interrupt. Look, Spade, I'll get pushy with my chief of detectives. Thanks, Knuckles. Please, Phil, don't interrupt. But surely that would eliminate the boys from being suspects. Would it? It could also be used to line the bottom of a cocktail glass, so that when the victim drank from the glass, the poison would have the same effect. That's better. Oh, that's a relief. I thought it was my dream buoy that was killing him. That's it. I can't take it anymore. I have a confession to make. I knew it! He did it! No, not that. It's just something I gotta get off my chest. Last year, on Yom Kippur, Kippur, I ate a Nathan's hot dog with mustard and sauerkraut and onions. It was delicious. I felt terrible. I went to a priest to confess, but he knew I was Jewish. He wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> I feel so guilty. <laughs> ah, shut up. I did it. Sit down, inebriated. Turns out I didn't do it. Please get on with it, Mr. Spade, as my arteries are rapidly hardening. Right, and the murderer is... Here's where Spade ties this all up in a neat little package. 
He's used all his tricks, his interrogation techniques, modern methods, and his superior skills at deduction. Enough already! I can do this myself! And the murderer is Peaches Latour! <gasps> oh, Jake. Now I'll never be able to give you that command performance I was so looking forward to. Yes, I did it! They both had to go. Vasila wanted me to be his private property. But I couldn't stand the way he kept noodling behind my vocals. It was like somebody was sawing an accordion in half. And Broken Ridge. He jilted me after a one-night stand. He didn't even know what color my hair was. What color is your hair? Not funny, Jake. But I ain't playing straight man to you. I'm making my exit and I'm not coming back for tonight's performance. Here's another Nazi goodie I acquired. One brush of this deadly mascara, and you'll spend the rest of your days hallucinating that you play third base for the Pittsburgh Pirates! You don't want to see this. Come on, Miss Latour. You're gonna get a Latour of the woman's house of detention. Come on, move it, doll face. Nice work, Angel. Thanks, Jake. Now all I need is a new band leader, a new singer, and a new high roller. Oh, well, drinks are on the house. Well, Hildy. Well, Jake, once again, we're not going to get paid. Not so. Here, Jake, I stopped going to the beauty salon for a solid month so I could give you that. Thanks. Come on, Jake. I'll buy you a Yoo-Hoo. Hello. My name is Sidney Orchard Street. Oh, you may remember me from such classic detective dramas as Mots at Midnight, where I played the oil with the sharpest knife. Or perhaps the now legendary Enough with the Killing Already. There! I was really cast against type as a flamenco dancer. Ooh, like cucaracha, like cucaracha. <laughs> oh, but enough about me. Enough about me. But if you want to be a detective instead of a doctor or a lawyer, be the best gumshoe you can be. Be polite to the police. And above all, be courteous to the crooks. Now, if you ever get mixed up with a shady lady, have the decency to pull down the shade. Now, please, watch me in my next motion picture. The picture who knew too much. A lot of action, murder, mayhem, and two hard-boiled eggs. And after that one, I go right into a big production with real suspense, action, and drama. It's called The Mezuzah of the Baskervilles, where I wear a hat. Well, let me wish you all mazel and a good night. You know, every time I do these things, I can never find a waiter. Now, waiter, why don't you take care of me? What do you mean I should wash my hat and coat? The last time I washed my hat and coat, they stole the chicken. Oh, you don't know things about these things. Well, I could flick a chicken better than the chef. Let me flick a chicken. I'm telling you, when I flick a chicken, those feathers, they fly all the way into the dust around here. What kind of a restaurant is this? Oh, I should wash my hat and coat up, please. Don't go back to that again. I remember all you waiters. And you expect a tip? I very seldom tip. And I don't think I'm going to tip you anyway.
because of you the sun will shine the moon and stars will say you're mine You.